Hi, welcome to another episode of Wi-Fi. Today I'd like to talk about the doubling series. It's a very important series in this whole topic. The doubling series is a very important series when it comes to nature and growth and how things grow mainly. Since numbers are kind of philosophical in nature, they have a really deep meaning behind them. They're not just used for counting things, which is what we mostly do with it. We use them for calculating and they represent stuff. Calculating distances. But yes, they do go much deeper. They do have a much deeper meaning than just one, two, three, four. Why is it so special, you might be asking? The doubling series really represents the beginning of life. We'll get into this in more detail later on in other videos, but just want to touch on it really quickly. Basically, when life begins, you start off with one cell in each male and female organism. When those two cells come together, they actually become a single cell. Then that single cell begins to divide, and it will divide into two. And then it'll divide again, and it'll divide into four, and then into eight, and then into sixteen, and thirty-two, and sixty-four cells, and so on. So everything seems to have a doubling nature to it when it's growing. And it seems that once this spark of life begins, it's almost impossible to extinguish it. Naturally, that is. If allowed to, it'll just continue to grow and grow. But nature has a way of limiting things like that. So let's get into it. Part of the information that I'm going to share with you guys today is based on work done by a man named Marco Rodin. If you're unfamiliar with Marco Rodin, you can check out the link in the description below to some of his work. But Marco Rodin is responsible for things such as vortex mathematics, the Rodin coil, and uh, things like that. It kind of inspired me and brought on most of this work, but uh, it has evolved a little bit from that point into what I'm going to be presenting in the future. Now, Marco Rodin also had a much broader goal in mind for the vortex mathematics and what these numbers mean to him. It's kind of interesting that these nine numbers have so much wisdom in them that everybody sees something different, everybody gets something different out of the nine digits kind of opens up your mind, expands your mind, and allows you to see things that you may not have seen before. To me, these numbers represent something very important. So here we see the nine numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, basic digits. There's no zero, uh, because in root mathematics, which is what we're basing all of our information on, is root mathematics. If you haven't watched that video, it's the first video in this channel, other than the channel introduction. You can watch that video to get an idea of what root math mathematics is, if you don't understand what root math is. I'll also go into more detail later on in other videos about why these nine numbers are so important, what these numbers represent to me, philosophically. So to begin, you basically take the nine numbers and you write them down, one to nine, from top to bottom. Then, simply double them across the page. Well, starting with one, you double them. One, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, and so on. We don't have to go too far, too many, just six digits, six, seven, eight digits, just to see this proof. And then you do the same thing for two, double it, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, hundred twenty-eight, etc. So once you're done with all nine digits, you'll have something that looks like this. And then from this point, you just want to convert all these numbers to their root number. And you'll get something that looks like this. You'll notice in the top row, 
our doubling series 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. In the second row we have 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 1, 2, and so on, so on. And this pattern will continue. Threes and sixes, you'll see here that they just seem to flip back and forth between 3 and 6. 3, 6, 3, 6. And the 9 series on the bottom just seems to repeat 9 forever. 9, 9, 9, 9. Kind of interesting. What I like to do is reduce these down to their basics. So if we get rid of all the repeat patterns, we're basically left with just three. Three basic patterns in these series of numbers. We get our doubling series, one, two, four, eight, seven, five, and then we get this repeating three, six, three, six, three, six, alternating digits. And then you get the solid line of nine, 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 nine. nine. So we've got three distinct patterns from doubling our digits, one to nine. These are extremely important patterns, extremely important series to remember in our root mathematics series. Here you see what happens when we divide one by each of these digits. One divided by one equals one, one divided by two equals 0 0.5 and so on. What you'll notice is 1 divided by 3 gives you a repeating 3's into infinity. 1 over 6 gives you a repeating 1, 6, 6, 6, 6 into infinity. But one of the most important series out of all of this is 1 over 7. 1 divided by 7 gives us a very interesting series, our doubling series, but not quite the same. 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. A slightly different pattern than the one that we get when we just double one. So one way of representing the series is by graphing it and we can do so by using a circular graph. If we draw a circle and we divide it into nine and we put a decimal at each of these divisions we can then graph out the series on the circle. This is what the doubling series looks like. It's like a winged V pattern. When you divide one by seven, it gives us this other pattern of one, four, two, eight, seven, five. And when you graph this pattern on the circle, you get a graph that looks something like this. And when you overlap these two patterns, this is what the result is. We'll be going over these in more detail in future videos, but for now, just kind of keep them in your mind. Now, if we simplify things and divide our circle into six parts, and instead of numbering it one to six, we're going to number our doubling series in here instead. One, two, four, eight, seven, five. You might be asking yourself where three and six are. So I decided to arrange it in this manner because I was looking for another way to represent this doubling series in a simple manner. And I decided that six points on a circle was kind of suiting because the circle is kind of self-dividing into six based on its radius. One, two, four, eight, seven, five around the circle. Then you might be asking yourself, where are the threes and the sixes? I don't see them anywhere. That's because they're technically hidden between each of these numbers, one, two, four, eight, seven, five. If you add up one plus two, you get three, right? And if you add two and four together, you get six. So they're kind of in between each of these decimals. Four plus eight equals 12, and if you add one and two together, do the root math there, you get a three in between four and the eight. So you notice that it's kind of like alternating between three and six, which is what we want, right? It's what we expect, because in our series, we know that three and six alternate, which is basically their nature. And they're telling you something right there, is that their nature is an alternating nature. And so this is what it looks like when you put the threes and the sixes into their position. They kind of look something like this. Just a representation. 
but soon you'll come to realize that there's more to this than just numbers counting. Now the reason why these numbers are in the position that they're in is because they all balance on the number 9. If you look right across from each other, if you haven't noticed already, starting with 1, the direct opposite of 1 is 8, and when you add 1 and 8 together you get 9. So we know that those are in the right position. Same with 2 and 7 and 5 and 4. Isn't it curious how they all seem to balance around the number 9? And same with the hidden numbers 3 and 6 between each of these decimals, they also balance on the number 9 on their opposites of each other. They're opposing each other and they add up to the number 9. This is kind of like a requirement in order for it to fit into this diagram that I'm building. Another thing you might notice is that this kind of conveys a motion. So it's almost as if this series is telling you that we're going to move in a clockwise manner. We're going to rotate in a clockwise manner from this point of view. And based on the number series, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, it's kind of moves in that direction and then repeats itself so it's like a repeating cyclic pattern. And here again if we take a look at that 1 divided by 7 pattern 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7 and you map it out over this doubling series of 6 it shows us a really interesting motion. If we trace out this motion, 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, it almost draws like a triple figure 8 pattern almost. It's the only way I can kind of describe it, moving from left to right, or right to left, and then yet it has like a strong upward and downward motion in the north and south directions. So it's almost like it swings left and right, back and forth, and then has a heavy upstroke and a downstroke. So this shape is also known as the Enneagram. And the Enneagram holds a lot of wisdom actually. If you take the time to actually look into it, it is more than just a personality chart. Believe me. If you try looking it up in Google, you might find lots and lots of information about the uh, nine personality types and how they relate to each other but this goes way deeper than that this can be applied to music and light and all kinds of things like that so you just have to really kind of look at it closely carefully with an open mind to really understand the full meaning of this so that's partially why i'm here to help you along I'm just presenting to you what it means to me from my point of view and I'm hoping that at some point that it helps other people discover something for themselves also. I would be really interested to know what this means to you. So another thing we can do with these numbers is uh, specifically the numbers that we doubled at the beginning 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 if we double those numbers across and we do some root math on them it gives us kind of like a series of numbers that we can use to graph and if we put all these into a line graph it looks something like this I apply this over 12 steps and it shows us something kind of interesting. This image is representing an archetype. Although the 9 isn't misplaced, it's up at the top of this graph, but if it was 
in nature it would be down the center between the 4 and the 5. 4 plus 5 equals 9, that's the way we balance this out. 1 plus 8 equals 9, 7 plus 2 equals 9, 6 plus 3 equals 9, 5 plus 4 equals 9, so 9 should be definitely down the center. But just on this graph it's displayed at the top. You know what you might notice is that the 9 would go down the middle and we have the 3 and the 6 that spirals around it. And then around the entire thing, around those, we have the 1, the 2, the 4, the 5, the 7, and the 8 spiraling around all that. It's not clear if it's traveling in the same direction or opposite directions. Or if things are standing. It's a possibility that 6 and 3 are standing waves which aren't moving at all, but they're just alternating. While the 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8 pairs are spiraling around in a definite direction from right to left or left to right, I'm not too certain. But it does look like they are traveling in a motion. The doubling series is definitely telling us that there is some kind of motion going on. It's a driver, an energy source of some kind. If we take these numbers and we want to graph them on a spiral graph, it would look something like this. Here we see the 9 in the middle, and then as you get further out, the numbers decrease, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And when you map each of these series around it, although it might be difficult to tell with each of these colors, but you can notice that the 3 series and the 6 series form a definite star in the middle, a star of David, a star tetrahedron, but it's definitely spiraling around the nine, or alternating around the nine in this sort of fashion. Kind of cool. Then you'll also notice that we have the 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8 series rotating around also. But they're rotating around individual points. They're rotating around their individual points. So it's almost like you have six spirals spiraling around with the 3 and the 6 alternating and then the 9 going down the center. This is the kind of motion that's being described to me when I look at these numbers. From the side view, from the front view, and then when you combine them you can see them side by side. So it's describing motion to me, nature of motion, if that makes sense. So I hope you found that interesting and I didn't bore you to death with my monotonality voice. And I hope you look forward to the next video, which we will be talking about Fibonacci series and the Fibonacci sequence and how root mathematics plays its role on that and how it all ties in with the doubling series. That is going to be awesome. It's going to be very exciting. I cannot wait. It's going to take a little while to prepare, but it'll be well worth it. Please subscribe to my channel if you guys like this content. It also motivates me to create this stuff and lets me know that you guys like what I'm doing. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll try and answer those questions for you. Until next time, Wi-Fi.